Good late afternoon, everybody. It's time to start talking about some of the negative things to come out of Sunday's game. Uh, this morning, we talked about some of the positives with the Shane Waldron offense. And earlier this afternoon, we talked about the depth of the Seahawks roster showing up in positive ways in that game. But now, let's take a look at some of the stuff that didn't go so well, specifically the injuries. There were basically four coming out of that game against Indy. Yes, Tyler Lockett went down and missed one play, but came back in and was obviously totally fine. He caught a 70-yard touchdown after that. Um, Puna Ford went down for a play, but he played again after he left the game for a play, so I'm pretty sure he's totally fine as well. So not really talking about those guys, but there were basically four injuries of note coming out of that indie game that will have an effect on this team going forward. So let's just run through those four injuries and talk about what the likely outcome and consequences of those injuries will be. So first, we have Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny has a calf strain, and Carroll's comments of just actually a couple minutes ago indicated that he will at least miss this one week. So Rashad Penny is going to miss at least a game. And Rappaport reports here that he is expected to be shut down for a few weeks to fully heal. Now, if you go on IR, you can come back after three weeks. So the most likely outcome to all this is that Rashad Penny goes to IR, misses the next three games, and then comes back in week five. So... It didn't sound like what he had on Sunday was that bad, but apparently it's going to be bad enough to cost him some games, and that might be the end of the Rashad Penny experience in Seattle. I know he's going to play for us again, but I think there's a good chance that by the time he comes back, Alex Collins and DJ Dallas will have taken his role. And if those guys play well over the next few games, which I think they're capable of, then they might just decide, okay, we got to eat the sunk cost on Penny. We, we can't just keep forcing him into the game because he was a first-round pick. Some people's bodies are just not cut out for the NFL. Some people just aren't built to take those hits. And bottom line is that if we have a good thing going with Collins and DJ Dallas in three weeks then Penny may very well have just injured himself out of the running back rotation and be relegated to garbage time for the remainder of the season. I think that's a very likely outcome of this. So Penny gone for three weeks. Beyond that, we also had Penny Hart and Dwayne Eskridge, who were kind of getting lumped together because they both had concussions. I didn't see Penny Hart's concussion personally. I don't know where it happened. I don't know if it was special teams or offense. I did, of course, see the Dwayne Eskridge one, which was really bad and not fun to look at. But um, Carroll basically said there's no way for them to know, and they're not going to have any indication about either of those guys until Wednesday. But I'm going to go ahead and say it right now that both of those guys should miss at least one game, assuming they both have concussions, which I believe has already been officially said. In fact, I don't think the NFL is even supposed to allow a player to come back after one week when they have a concussion. So Eskridge in particular, his looked like it could have been really bad. It seems like it wasn't. But I expect Dwayne Eskridge and Penny Hart to both miss this upcoming game against the Titans and possibly make it back for week three, but also possibly not. We've seen concussions take two weeks to come back from. And Eskridge's not that this is necessarily indicative of how long it takes to recover, but his looked particularly visceral. So, as much as I think Eskridge can help this offense, and as much as I do appreciate what Penny Hart did this training camp, I really do not want him to, or, well, them, actually, either of them to hurry back from something like this. That's something that can end your season. That's something that can end your career. Sometimes concussions really can do that. So, both those guys probably going to miss a game, possibly going to miss two games. I would be very surprised and even a little concerned if they made it back for the Titans game. Finally, we have Ethan Posick, 
and his we don't know a whole heck of a lot about. He played 14 snaps, did not play very well, and sprained his knee. <clears throat> we don't know of the severity yet, but I think Post Sick lost whatever little bit of goodwill he may have had with his play on Sunday against the Colts. Um, he played not, uh, nine pass block snaps and gave up a sack. Some people were arguing that the sack was on Damian Lewis because Damian Lewis is supposed to pick up uh, Buckner after Posick passes him off, which that may be the case. I don't know. But Posick was already having a lot of things work against him. We already know he's injury prone. He missed most of training camp in the preseason with injuries, and now he's injured again after 14 snaps. It's, it's just bad all around. So I'm not a fan of Kyle Fuller, but I do have to admit that he probably played better than Posick on Sunday. I'm still hoping that somebody like Shepley can come in and save the day, or maybe we can put together a trade or bring in somebody, but as of right now, it seems like Fuller is the guy, so losing Posick is not a huge deal, but I'll say it again. The other shoe, I feel like, is coming for Fuller. He was not good on Sunday, I don't think. Maybe he wasn't terrible, maybe he wasn't even bad, but he wasn't good. And I feel like the terrible Kyle Fuller stuff is coming. If there's one guy who's playing significant snaps for this team that I truly do not believe in at all, it is Kyle Fuller. So hopefully we find a solution to that, and <clears throat> hopefully it's something that we can at least live with. So that's really about it. All in all, not a bad day at the office for the Seahawks in terms of their injuries, but the Dwayne Eskridge thing is particularly painful because I was excited to see what he could do in this offense. I was excited to see how we would use him. And you can see the ways in which we're using him are intriguing and creative, and you can see how they're adding something to this offense even when he only touches the ball a few times in a game. You can see the ways in which he's making defenses have to think for an extra half second. So, definitely disappointed about that, and I'm seeing Seahawks fans already start to make the uh, Creed Humphrey comparisons, which is understandable because I believe Creed Humphrey played very well for the Chiefs in Week 1, and that comparison is going to live on into eternity, but I, I still like Eskridge, I still think he can be a good player for us, I don't know if it was the right pick for us or not, but definitely discouraged about that, so... Other than that, it you guys know that I'm a little bit of a Penny sympathizer, Rashad Penny that is, but it seems like the writing's on the wall there either way, and at the end of the day, if your body's not built to handle NFL football, then it's not built to handle NFL football. We should have realized that before we used a first round pick on him, but well, now we're here, and I guess we just have to live with it. So that's your injury roundup. Not a whole lot terrible coming out of this one. I think all these players will be back in the coming weeks, but you you can expect, I think, all of them to at least miss a game. All right, see you guys later. Peace out, go Hawks. Sound off down below.